Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug and I'd like to welcome you back to another chemistry video. In this video, we're going to take a look at scientific thinking and what science is and what science is not. Now, as we talk about scientific thinking, there are several characteristics that would make up what is scientific thinking. Here are four of the more important ones. Scientific thinking is based on empirical evidence. And so this is based on something that we can repeat, something that we can publish, something that we can share with other people, something that is repeatable. And so if you can't measure it, if you can't repeat it, it's not really scientific thinking. Also, scientific thinking is willing to change when new and better evidence emerges. We're not necessarily set in our ways. If new, better evidence comes along, good scientists are willing to backtrack and willing to do a course correction. That's not flip-flopping, that's just good science. Also, scientific thinking is not based on personal beliefs or opinions or conjecture. And so, just because someone thinks that, for example, uh, climate change uh, is not real because they don't want it to be real, uh, well, that doesn't make it science. We have to base our scientific thinking on data. What does the measurable data actually show us? It doesn't matter what our personal beliefs or opinions are about a matter. We have to set those aside and focus on the data. Also, scientific thinking does not twist the facts to favor one's own preference. So, for example, we might have an opinion as we see up here, but the fact is we have to set our opinions aside and carry out an experiment and not twist the facts to favor our own preference. We have to be very careful because there is a lot of misinformation out there and it can be very easy to be uh, misled by misinformation. Let me give you an example of this. Let's say we have this a, a little set of, of information. It says of the 42,795 people who died in motor vehicle accidents in 2022, 53% of them were wearing a seat belt, while only 47% were not wearing a seat belt. Therefore, you are safer in a car crash if you are not wearing a seat belt. So, would you agree with that statement or would you disagree with that statement? Some people might take this information and say, well, hang on here. Most people who died in car crashes were wearing seat belts. So, they must not be good for you. You must be better off not wearing a seat belt. Well, remember, misinformation is out there. And so, sometimes misinformation happens because people leave out important information from the data. Here's something that this uh, little paragraph did not mention. 90.3% of people who travel in motor vehicles wear a seat belt in the United States. And so that's a piece of information that might be helpful in order to understand uh, that the conclusion that was given here, you are safer in a car crash if you're not wearing a seat belt, is not true. Now, how can we do that? Well, let's just run the numbers. We're going to imagine, and this this first number doesn't matter. In fact, you can try this with any number and you'll find out that it works out the same way. Let's just suppose for a moment that there are a million people who were in serious car crashes during a certain year. Now, that means that 90.3% of them were wearing a seat belt. So, 903,000 of those people who were in crashes were wearing a seat belt while the other 9.7%, that's 97,000, did not wear a seat belt. And the data said that 53% of those who uh, died were wearing a seat belt. So when we do the math on that, that's 22,681 people. If you divide that by the 903,000 who were wearing a seat belt, that gives us a death rate of 2.5%. Now, that means that 47% of those who died were not wearing a seatbelt. So that's about 20,114. But notice that that's divided by only 97,000, which gives us a death rate of about 20.7%. And so when we actually examine all the data, all the evidence, we find that it is much safer to wear a seatbelt. In fact, you are... Uh, eight times more likely to uh, survive the car crash if 
you are wearing a seat belt than if you're not. So remember, it's not science if you can't test it using measurable data. It's not science if it's just something that someone has made up. For example, if we say Mr. Smith's classroom is haunted, is that scientific thinking? Well, no, it's not because we can't really measure that, can we? Students who believe Mr. Smith's classroom is haunted are more likely to miss school. Now, we can test that, can't we? We can look at maybe a questionnaire of people who think that this, this classroom is haunted, and then we can also look at a, uh, at a list of attendance data and see if there's a relationship there. Also, it's not science if it's been thoroughly debunked. And so if someone comes out and says the Earth is the center of, of the solar system, well, that's just not true. We know that that's not the case. And so it's not a scientific statement. We can't hold on to ideas and, and statements that have just been completely debunked over the course of history. The Earth has an equatorial circumference of 24,901 miles, assuming that that's the correct circumference. Yes, that is a scientific statement. We can test it. It is true. So science or not science? Every substance on Earth is composed of a combination of one or more of 118 different elements. Well, that is a scientific statement, isn't it? Assuming that's the correct number of elements on the periodic table, we can test that. It describes the natural world. We can uh, repeat a test on that. Getting vaccinated against measles makes people magnetic and injects them with a tracking device. Is that science or not science? Well, no, it's not. It does not make people magnetic. This is something that's just been debunked. It's just not true. So that's not a scientific statement. Your personality and future are determined by the alignment of the stars and planets when you were born. That's not a scientific statement either, is it? Now, some people may believe that. Uh, but like we said earlier, scientific statements cannot be based upon our own opinions or our own feelings. We have to focus on the facts, focus on the data, and that statement right there is not scientific. The Earth is actually flat and there is a conspiracy to convince people that the Earth is a sphere. Well, that's not a scientific statement either, is it? There are some people who believe that, but that is a statement that has been completely debunked. The Earth is a sphere and that's just how it is. Our opinions or someone's, you know, it doesn't matter how adamantly someone uh, tries to say that, if it's false, it is not a scientific statement. Well, hope you learned something from this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please slam that uh, thumbs up button and subscribe if you're uh, so inclined. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time in our next video where we can learn some more chemistry together.